Hey, my name is Ivy Starnes and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we're talking about bitless bridles and it was brought up that people were asking about how to do lateral and vertical flexion bitless. So I made a quick video, I filmed stuff today, I'm filming it on my own so none of it's like really high quality. So I look at it and go, mm, not so fun. But we're gonna talk about bitless. I'm gonna tell you some of the things I like. I'm gonna try to go through this pretty quickly because I've got a bunch of video clips to show you. I just want to make sure this is all working here. Okay, so what bitless comes in a few different categories. Really briefly, it means there's no bit. There are mechanical hackamores. There are side poles, which is basically what I'd call a bitless bridle. You have the cross unders, which I do not like because the most popular one is Dr. Cook's, but there's quite a few. And I don't like the cross unders because they cross under to so the reins go through uh, pieces on the side, they go under the jaw and then back up around the pole and or under the chin, back up over the pole. And when you release, it doesn't automatically release all of those things that you pulled on. And so I really don't like it because it's not a very exact tool to communicate with the horse. So there you go. I'm going to show you um, this video I put, I made that video about Bitless a few years ago and I'm gonna basically use a little bit of that footage and then we're gonna show the new footage about how to do lateral and vertical flexion with bitless. And again, you have to pardon the not great video. Okay, so this is the bitless bridle that I designed. Uh, it has just the noseband, the reins attached at the ring here. It's the same on both sides, okay? And then this um, cheek strap actually is supposed to be tight. It actually pulls these, uh, the leather cheek pieces away from the eye because if you don't, here's what happens. So if you don't have this tight uh, or you don't have one at all, okay, and uh, so if you don't have this, what you'll see a lot of times is when people ask the horse to turn, they pull on their left rein, see how that cheek piece hits the eye? That happens all the time in a lot of side pulls. You're starting to see more and more side pulls uh, or bitless bridles start to have this cheek piece, which is awesome. So I recommend you always get, even if you don't buy mine, get a bitless bridle that has a cheek piece similar to this. This is a wide nose band. Some people even add um, a sheepskin padding, you know, like wool padding there or sheepskin padding. Um, also, the nose band is supposed to be loose so that he can chew. Because I do a lot of clicker training or just allowing the horse to yawn and use his draw, you need this to be loose. Uh, the reins don't matter too much. Um, this is not a cross under. I don't like most cross unders because most cross unders, um, when they don't release fully. So they go up to here, the cross under, and are part of the reins, and I don't find that they release. Some people will disagree. That's okay. This is just my personal opinion, which is what you're here to, to get. So my personal opinion is I don't use cross unders. Anything that's got the metal piece that has that leverage, um, that's called a mechanical hackamore, and is definitely more harsh, but some people use it so they can be safe because some horses really don't do well in a bit. So in just a minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on, I'm going to ride, and I'm going to show you how to continue when you first get on a horse, those exercises you can do. So the bitless bridle that you see in that video is one I designed maybe 10 years ago, eight years ago, because there were really none on the market. The good news is there is a lot out there now. And we're going to talk about two that I like, one with a pretty high price tag and one with a much lower price tag. But the, you can also look around, find something. Uh, what I'm going to show you has a teeny tiny bit of leverage, very, very small. But most people, when they think of mechanical hackmores, they're talking about ones with shanks that are pretty long. And I'm not a super fan of those because because there's leverage, you don't know how much pressure you're putting on the horse and they tend to be quite harsh. Uh, so here's a, this video of what I made today showing the bitless bridles, the two that I like, and the links are in the description already if you want to check those out. Here we have this bridle. This has a very mild shank on it, but it's not a cross under. The reins attach here. Um, this is kind of an expensive bridle. It's really nice, has really nice padding here, really nice padding here. Um, I'm going to show you this bridle and which is uh, on the, uh, the lower side, the less expensive side, because we need that sometimes. So, and I'll have links to this. I know. All right. Yeah, I gotta get this so it fits you, because I think it's a little lopsided from 
being in the car. Okay. Here we go. Here's this one, and it comes in lots of colors. This is not a good color for him, but I got it for a different horse. So, uh, so again, it's not a cross under. It fits around the nose. Um, you can adjust it a little bit higher or smaller, and then you have rings on each side where you can put, um, you can get the option to put the rings where you want them. And this one is like, I think, $50. So it's a much, I think it's a really good bitless option. Make sure you fit it up high. You should have a couple fingers here so it doesn't rub, but then it shouldn't be any lower than this right here. Hopefully you guys can see that on the video. Um, and you can do, you know, vertical flexion. You can, there, there, he did vertical flexion right there. Good. Yes. Getting those jelly mushrooms. Okay, so that's, um, that's the synthetic bitless bridle that I have listed. It's very simple. It's like a nicer version of a halter if you want something to ride like that. I like how it looks. I would get a different color for this horse, but this I got for Jackson, my quarter horse, and he's a chestnut, so we do that. So there's just some thoughts on that. Let's talk about, we did bitless. So this is, um, I'm going to show you a video with my quarter horse Jackson and it's a little bit about safety and then we're going to go into a little bit more detail about what vertical flexion is what lateral flexion is and how that relates to the safety um, but it's really important that if you want to ride bitless you do these exercises because you need to know that you can stop and turn and control your horse when things get exciting okay so when you first get on your horse hopefully you've done some groundwork to teach him to stop and turn and you can do a lot of different lunging I'm sorry Jackson sorry He's, there's not much in here anymore, but okay. All right, anyway, so you've done, but then you get on and you're like, okay, what do I do first? Well, first thing to do, can you turn? Can you turn your horse? And you can practice this in a halter. Oh, before you even, before you even uh, get a bitless bridle. So you don't even have to get a bitless bridle to practice this. Put a halter on, put some reins on and take your horse, can you turn? Will your horse just turn? like this. Can you pull on the reins and he turns his head without having to like pull so hard you feel you're going to fall off. It should be nice and light pressure. Can you just turn? You don't need to do too much lateral flexion, but will he turn? All right. And then it's, uh, can you stop? So if you walk off, when you pick up on the reins without doing anything with your voice, does your horse stop? He did. Good. I know there's some flies. Will he back up? Put light pressure on. My horse is ignoring me. There you go. There was a little bit of a lean back. If you can't get a nice backup with just a halter and light pressure on the nose, you know, you want to go back and work on that, even on the ground or from the saddle. Pull and release here. Light pressure. Move your feet. There you go. Good. Good. Also, will he bring his nose in? So if I just pick up on my reins, kind of jiggle him a little bit, will he tuck his nose? Right there. See how he brought his nose in? I didn't have to fight. I wasn't yanking on it. Good. He knows he's done that. So good. Good. And again, I love to show you, and I will get some examples of you with a horse that doesn't know. Jackson is trained to do this. So now we're going to walk. I know there's bugs. So next thing we trot. Can you stop from the trot and put pressure on my reins? And he stopped. That's good. You want that. If you have to pull really hard to stop, you're probably not ready to do much more than keep working on the basics. Can you turn at the trot? Turn to the right, good. Turn to the left, good. Can you stop nicely? Good, nice, I didn't have to pull hard. If you're having to pull hard, you're probably, you probably need to go back and do a lot of forward and back up. And that's kind of the basics of bitless at the beginning. And of course, then you wanna throw in canter there. So before you go outside in a big pasture on a trail ride, you need to make sure you do some cantering to make sure that you can stop. Because every time you add speed to a horse, you change things and you have to make sure that they're listening. See how he's just yawning? You need to make sure that the, the noseband piece is loose enough so that they can yawn uh, with, with that on. And can I stop? Yep, we can stop. So that's, that's a good, those are all good things to practice. Can you stop? Can you back up? Can you turn? And you can do all that in just a halter before you even get a special bitless bridle. And if you can do it in a halter, 
you can do it in a bitless bridle and it doesn't take too much you know if you can do it on the ground in the halter you're pretty much ready to try under saddle or just you know bareback but try to be smart about it and do the training to make sure that your horse is listening and going to keep you safe as much as possible with the bitless bridle you don't have as much technical control the horses of course can run away in any bit the biggest bit there is so you have to do more training at a bitless to make sure that when you pick up on the reins the horse isn't stiff that he softens immediately so that so the next thing that we're going to talk about is vertical flexion and lateral flexion. What we want to talk about is what are those things? Well, vertical flexion is when the horse tucks the nose toward the chest. This is not what we want to teach the horse to go all the time, but when you pick up any rein contact, your horse should know to soften or give you vertical flexion. This is a video that I have that is from uh, a clinic that I did. This is actually a quarter horse and he's being ridden in his snaffle. And I have this video because I want people to see very, very clearly what vertical flexion is. So it's when the horse, when you pick up the reins and with very light contact, the horse tucks the nose. Now, in the case of gated horses, we're not asking them to keep the nose tucked, but every time you touch the reins, your horse should tuck his nose. This is especially true with gated horses. If your horse will not soften, especially you with bitless, I'm sorry, with bitless and gated, if they're bracy, then it doesn't help. But with bitless, if you don't have this softness, you are risking a horse that doesn't listen and will run away. So again, notice this horse when she takes contact on the reins, the horse tucks the nose and softens. And that's what we're looking for when we talk about vertical flexion. So let's go ahead and take a look at the video that I have from today where I did with Gunner and he's wearing um, the first bitless bridle that I showed you with a very, very slight shank. Like the shank is like this long. It's just very small. And I ride him and we work on lateral flexion. So lateral is side to side and vertical is the nose tucking. And you need to do both bitless and both need to be done really, really well. So let's take a look at this. It one. might uh, be a little bit easier. Good boy. Good job. Okay. Hopefully we can see. Oh. All right. So lateral flexion would be, so he's going to turn his whole body, but I'm going to be looking for him to turn his head. There, he turned it, and then I'll release. So this, let's see if I can back up here let's see, point this down enough. so if I was asking for right this is lateral flexion so I'm going to hold this contact my this rein is loose and the goal here there is to get softness is not to make him bend so I pull hard and he bent right but that that didn't look pretty I did have to pull pretty hard so what I'm going to do is have this contact here and I'm going to wait so I have contact so there he tucked his nose which is vertical flexion, and I, you can see that from the saddle, but I want lateral. And then, so there he softened to the right, and I release. So we're gonna do several to the right. It's better to do it in the same direction. There we go. Good. And you can also include uh, clicker training with this as well. Good. Very nice. And so you start with wherever he's at. If he puts his head straight, you start there. If I start here and he has his head a little bit, then I can release there. Good job. So once I have a horse that's trained to do that, I don't do it all the time I, because I want them to turn their body, not just their head. So here we're going to be asking for the left. There, that was so soft. Gentle, gentle contact. You can see my hand is not just pulling. and I'm waiting. Probably have about six, seven ounces of pressure. <clears throat> Good. So there he turned his body, moved his hip, which is not what I'm asking for. So I'm not going to release that con that very soft contact. So now see how his head went straight? I don't pull harder. I just follow him with my hand and keep, um, keep the same contact there. He softened. Now, it's really tempting when the horse like wants to turn the other direction to kind of pull harder because it's like, well, I want to go back to where we were. So again, he's looking straight. But I want to teach him to be soft and not just pull harder. Good. That's good. Yes. Nice job.
And again, he's turning his front end and back end, which is good. But if we're looking for, we talked about, you know, the lateral flexion, lateral will be left and right. Good. Good. Nice job. Good. But what if we want vertical flexion? Vertical flexion would be tucking the nose. And it's easier to see on the ground, but let's go ahead. And so what we're going to do is you take your reins and you shorten them and you hold very soft contact and you wait. And there he tucked his nose and on the release, he put his head down and took a deep breath. Nice job. Very good. And again, he's already been taught this. Um, I think this is the first time I've really purposefully ridden him bitless. There he softened right away. But you want to do all of these things when you first start working with your horse bitless, especially this vertical flexion where he tucks the nose. So I'm holding this light contact. See how his ears are up? That means he's not totally focused on me. He's looking at something else. We got an ear back. That's good. I'm just going to wait. You hold the same contact. And again, we're bitless. There you go. Good. Good job. Oh, no, no, no. Nope. Back up. Good. So I'm going to hold this light, light contact here. And the, the goal here is to hold that light contact, not to pull harder. Hold that really, really soft contact. Hold the soft contact. Hold the soft there. Big soften and big release. And it is important to notice that there is this big release. Good job. Nice. Contact. Good boy. Holding it now. So now he's, what I would say, ignoring the contact. Or basically aloof to it. Doesn't care because it's so soft. And But our goal is just to wait. There. Good. Good job. I know. Uh, so... What we were seeing there, uh, so they were saying that the um, the Pivo, uh, I'm using the Pivo on the ground and the GoPro on my helmet to get those two different angles because I thought it would help a lot for this. And I think it, it did. And you guys were saying that it's helpful. So anyway, that's good. And it, but it does take work to set up, like take time to film and all of that stuff. It does help. So, all right. Um... Let's see here. I, okay, so those are all the videos that I have about Bitless. Someone asked a question about a Bozal, and then I think the question got deleted. Uh, Bozals are fine. They are a very specialized tool, and they can be used really well. Uh, I've done a lot of training with the Bozal with my quarter horse, Jackson, and you just, it's, they're like, like what bit you use, it is a tool, and a lot of it is how you use it. And if you know how to use it well, there's nothing wrong with it. You can be very, very light with the Bozal. Bitless is really fun, and people were just asking, how do you show vertical and lateral flexion, and how do you teach it? Um, I know, I don't know if I have videos of this, but I think a few years ago, I had a, a horse that wasn't getting it really well, and I videoed it. I used clicker training to help her. She was basically very stiff at turning, and she was green. Like, I was starting her under saddle. She was very stiff at turning. And I did, I think, one session with the clicker that if she just even turned the slightest, I would reward. And the next, and then like it was fixed. It was it was perfect after that. It was really easy. Uh, Kathleen says, I was just given a bitless bridle, but I have no experience with one. The training is so timely. Good. I'm so happy. The big thing is people can get into trouble uh, with bitless if they're not sure how to prep. You can't just put a bitless bridle on a horse that you don't know if they're ready and just go on a trail ride because they may run away with you. You need to practice stopping, turning at all speeds, walk, gait, and canter, and fast gait. If you don't add that speed in during training, you don't know that your horse will respond when you add that speed or that energy in later. And so that's very, very true. Definitely something to remember, and it's true whether you use a bit or bitless. But people run into more trouble with bitless because it's just easier to lose that control uh, because you can't apply as much pain. Oh, hold on. This common thing is not working great. All right. That was me with the Bozal question. I deleted it due to spelling errors. I was just curious if you recommended another version of bitless. Uh, mainly, my personal preference is a simple bitless or side pole that has a strap that goes under the jaw so that it pulls the cheek pieces away from the eye. 
and that would be my personal preference. And whether you use leather or synthetic, like at that point, it's, you know, whatever you think looks pretty or you like. Uh, Chrissy says, how about bridalists? Sure. I, I, uh, I love bridalists. I love training bridalists. I have lots of videos of bridalist training already on this page and on the private training group with my mayor, Serenity. So Google Serenity, or not Google, on this page, Ivy's uh, Glidegate, search Serenity, and also in the private training group, search Serenity, and you'll see a bunch of bridalist videos. Robin says, I've used a Dr. Cook's with a very light pressure and no problems. If you're going to use a cross under, you should not be using lots of pressure, in my opinion. Which is a good point, Robin, but you have to understand that most people use the cross under to have more control, specifically to use more pressure. And you're going to have trouble at that point, in my opinion. So that's, I think it's a, it's a very good point. April says, I have a mare that will only ride bitless and she won't accept any bit and she does ride really well bitless. Yeah, definitely. I, I had a passive female that I started under, not started, I rode and trained eight years ago and he came with a giant shanked bit, with I, which I never used. And I immediately started riding him bitless and he did amazing. And then his owners were going to come get him soon. And so I was like, well, let me try the snaffle. I put the snaffle in and he went nuts. Now nuts is a little bit of an exaggeration. He basically put his head back up. Stress came back where he was very calm and relaxed in the bitless. And I basically told him like, I think he has a lot of trauma related to the people that trained him using a bit. And so I think bitless is the way to go. And that's another reason why some horses do really well. Here's a side note. If you have a horse with a heavy neck and a heavy head, it will take about three times as long to train, two or three times as long to train good softness in a bitless as it will with a horse with a skinny head and skinny neck. Just saying. Uh, Chrissy said we should do a bridalist clinic. I need to learn. Well, uh, sure. We can maybe try to do that in January or February. Um, we wouldn't need a large area to ride. So we could do that, Chrissy, and just see who wants to come. Uh, it's not going to be like amazing. Like you're not going to have people riding in bridalist championships in one day, but we could certainly do it. It's really fun. And we already have Jackson who's like, he does bridalist. So there's that. Uh, anyway, so... I was hoping to do bridalists with either my mare Serenity this winter or Macaroni, so that may be coming up. We will see. It just depends on what I get to. Anyway, uh, we've wait, got another question, which keeps disappearing. Uh, Diane says, riding my horse in a bitless bridle on mostly loose rein taught me to communicate more using seat, voice, legs, and hands, and use hands last. Diane, that's a great uh, point, but I do want to say one thing. Your horse must know how to respond to hands before you move to seat and legs because heaven forbid someone dies, your horse, you get sick, your horse has to go away. You cannot guarantee that your horse will be ridden by someone who knows how to use seat. Your horse must know how to be soft, stop and turn with the hands first. Very first thing. I have people come to my clinics and they're like, oh, I ride my horse off of my seat. And I'm like, well, great for you, but how do you get softness? And they have no answer. So I totally love riding off of seat, but use your hands first, get that softness, and then ride off of your seat and learn to not use your hands. Kathleen says, Pasifino was interpreted in Pacific Nail. We need a, oh, she's talking about the, well, I'm not sure. Anyway, we need a horse savvy talk to text program. We all seem to ride a lot of mayors. <laughs> oh yeah, as opposed to mayors. That's funny. I didn't even know what was doing talk to text. Oh wait, do you mean like when you tried to do voice to text? Oh, that makes sense. Sorry, reading comments sometimes. My brain's slow to catch up. Anyway, yes, some fun stuff. Meg Ann says, how would you compare the discomfort pressure of a rock and ass snaffle to the discomfort of bitless? Uh, that is very dependent on the horse. Some horses, a bit is traumatic for them either from previous training or how their mouth is shaped, and so you have to find the right one. Where bitless, I'm going to say, you have to do more training with bitless to teach your horse to listen because you cannot cause the amount of pain if you have a simple bitless bridle. And I'm not talking about a hackamore. If you have a simple side pull, like a simple halter, you can almost always cause more pain with a bit than with a halter. That's not saying that some guy couldn't yank on a horse and cause more pain, but if the bitless bridle is fitted well and it's soft and comfortable, you will not be able to cause as much pain as you would with a, a snaffle. 
April says, mine are taught reins, leg, seat, and voice. I'm safety cautious. Yes, April, that's fantastic. It is good to teach all of those things. And then if you ever have to put them all together, your horse already knows it and it's you're much safer. And so I love Bitless. My quarter horse has been ridden exclusively. My mare Serenity, since I've had her, has been exclusively Bitless. And she'll probably stay that way. She was ridden with a bit when she was young. So if someone were to buy her or take her, I'm sure she would ridden with a bit and she'd be fine. But I just don't feel like I need that pressure with her. She happens to be one of those with the skinny um, skinny neck and skinny head. And so it, she's super easy to ride. Anyway, great comments, guys. Thanks for chiming in. I don't know that I'm going to do a live video tomorrow. I've got some great ideas for next week. What I'm do, what I am running out of is horses to train. <laughs> I never thought I would be running into that because you guys ask such great questions. I have to figure out how to film stuff and show you. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you want to see the bridalist videos I have. I got more on the private training group. Thank you to everybody that did join the private training group. Again, I mentioned it because the price will be going up in the new year. It's $99 now, and it will be going up to $200 next year. So there's my plug. Shameless advertising. Thank you guys so much for watching. And then there's more comments that come in, and then I have to answer them. Mark says, my guys are bridalist, and I just have to move my hands as would have had reins, and they flex laterally and vertically. That's awesome, Mark. We would love to see a video of that. If you send me a video of your horse doing that, I would love to post it. Nancy says, I love Bitless. My mare horse does well in it. I'm now training in a bit. He likes, so we will be good in, for both for future riders. Good. Um, anyway, Mark, thanks for joining us. You can go back and watch the beginning and love to hear more thoughts you have. Thank you, guys. And uh, you guys, I hope we'll have some exercises for winter soon. I, I just haven't had the headspace for that but we are going to be doing that soon so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll talk to you soon you got this